No matter how good your intuitive reader is, there are three things that only you can do to make sure the material you get is useful in every area of your life. Hi, I'm Corby Mitleid, and this is the Psychic Yellow Brick Road. The world is changing, and life doesn't have the spark it used to. So we look around and ask, where do I need to go to catch the magic again? You've found it. Welcome to the Psychic Yellow Brick Road, a weekly podcast that delves into the intuitive world, metaphysics, life purpose, and how to connect with the compassion of spirituality. I'm Corby Mitleid, and I've been on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road for 50 years. I'm a certified tarot master, past life specialist, psychic medium, channel, and author. And most importantly, I'm an elder in the field, ready to pass on everything I've discovered to you. So let's hit that Psychic Yellow Brick Road where you can find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkeys. Three ways to get the most out of your psychic information. Look, you wouldn't be human if you didn't come into a session with answers you hope to get. Things like, please say that Doug is Mr. Right, tell me that my boss will promote me, you've got to see that my finances are getting better this year, you just have to. I've heard all of it. But if you want certain answers and you think they absolutely have to be structured in a certain way, then it makes it impossible for me, or any intuitive, to help you get past your challenges. That's why, in order to get the best psychic support, you need to do three things. Widen your horizons, evaluate your information, and respond to the universe. First, widen your horizons. I want you to resist the urge to, yes, but. If I see that your mother-in-law will be instrumental in helping you get your down payment for the house you want, don't say, but she always gives money to everyone in the family except us, or, but she'll make us pay for it with all our carping she always does when she lends us anything. This defeats the purpose of giving you that information in two ways. You're dismissing the idea that circumstances or people can change, and you're focusing on the negative. What we focus on is what we get. It's a basic law of attraction rule. If a psychic sees something happening, we won't necessarily give you all the details because the situation remains fluid. Leave room for circumstances to unfold in the best way possible and visualize it that way. And if a situation looks like it's going to differ from your expectations, leave room for a changed mind. As I always say, avoid the yes-no questions. When you formulate your questions, either before your session or based on the information during the reading, it's more useful to ask how rather than yes-no. If you ask, will I get a new job, and the psychic says no, then you have no place to go, and you've turned your free will over to the psychic. A far better question would be, what do I need to do to get a new job? That kind of questioning enables us to share tools to help you explore where to look, avoid pitfalls and consider possibilities, determine what kind of a job you're truly suited for, and discover those in your circle who might help you up the corporate ladder. You get a full toolbox, and you can go out and create your own life. Free will, as I'll always remind you, is everything. It's the same with a question like, Will I get into college? It's better to ask how and also to list the places to which you've applied. For instance, someone could get admitted to Ohio State, Georgia Tech, and Lehigh. However, one may signal a change in major while you're there, one may be a short two year stint, and one may open the doorway to a chosen career one year early. Asking how questions help you explore all your options. And finally, An answer to a specific question may show you just how absurd your question was in the first place. Laugh. Don't be upset with yourself or the psychic. We're on your side. Next, evaluate the information. Even if you've been going to the same intuitive for years and you think you know how they read, delayed understanding is common. And if it's a first time, then you definitely need time to digest what you've been told. It's why I tell you to always get a recording. Let's say you and your daughter are always at loggerheads and you never get to know what's going on in her head. 
what may not make sense to you today, I say your daughter will ask you to help her through a personal crisis and you have to be gentle with her, becomes crystal clear to you in four months when a friend of hers dies in a car accident or she's picked for a semester in Barcelona and she's never been away from home or a sports injury means she loses a basketball scholarship to college. Sometimes you'll get what I call a verification reading. If I, a stranger, or at least someone who doesn't interact with you on a day-to-day basis, tell you in our session precisely what you were thinking about doing but hadn't discussed with anyone else, those are your guides and your angels giving you the thumbs up about the accuracy of your thoughts and decisions. If a psychic doesn't give you a whole bunch of information you don't already know, It's because what you know is what you should act upon, plain and simple. And accept that you may come to your session with all kinds of plans about where you're going to move, and yet the cards or your guides insist on telling you that your significant other won't be in the picture in another few months' time. You may want to hear about your children, but the cards discuss your health options. Know that your guides and angels in this case are following the old Rolling Stones axiom. You can't always get what you want, but you get what you need. That's why when you sit down with your intuitive counselor, it's best to come with an open mind and ready to explore what we find without judgment, just curiosity and a heart and mind ready to expand. And finally, respond to the universe. Once you've had your psychic session and you have all these new facts and factors to consider, what do you do? It's vital that you view the information as neutral. What you do with it determines its usefulness. If you find out, for instance, that your husband has been keeping some work problems from you, rather than panicking about it, why won't he talk to me? Does he want a divorce? Is he going to lose his job? See if you can get some feedback from him. If you ask a question about finances and the tower shows up in your reading, which generally foresees a crisis or a breakdown of some kind, don't sit up all night worrying. Make a point of investigating where you stand financially. Start your priority list about what's important to you and what isn't. See the information as a heads up that this aspect of your life needs attention. And if it turns out that yes, you do lose your house or your partner leaves you or you don't get the job you wanted, remember that none of these have to be disasters forever or even immediately. Always look at a problem as a challenge and say, next, now where do I go? rather than dwelling on what happened. It's also not uncommon to find out that losing your house means you move to a neighborhood better suited to you and your children. Your partner leaving you makes room for a real soulmate to walk into your life. And not getting the job you wanted propels you into opening the small business you've been dreaming about, but could never make happen as long as you were comfy in your job security. If the information you receive in session isn't what you wanted, Resist the impetus to go to another psychic to try and get the answer you were looking for. That doesn't work on a couple of levels. If you want to hear something that badly, you will eventually find a psychic who knows that, is less than scrupulous, and tells you what you want to hear with a hook to get you coming back again and again. You're wasting a whole lot of money looking for what doesn't exist. And the truthful information you may have gotten eventually gets muddied and forgotten in the process. Along that train of thought, don't return to your psychic month after month hoping the answer will change if you haven't worked with the information from your last session with them. We're not gurus. We're mentors at best. An honest intuitive will, if you keep coming back for session after session with the same questions, finally decline to read you further. And lastly, Remember that a psychic and their information are tools for you to use to make your life what you want it to be. We, in and of ourselves, aren't the repairman. No matter what we tell you, it's up to you to make the best life you can with the building blocks that spirit, your higher self, and your guides have lined up for you. I've been guiding friends and clients since 1973. I love showing you opportunities and how to grab them where the tough stuff is and how to get through it, and handing you your toolbox through tarot and oracle cards, past life exploration, spirit guides and angelic conferences, and mediumship. My website, corbymitlai.com, 
is full of articles, blogs, where to find me for live appearances, and where to listen to me as I guest on other podcasts. There's a full menu of readings, from short burning questions all the way up to the jewel in the crown, my soul plan readings, which are based on the work I did with Robert Schwartz. Whether it's general questions about your life in practical terms, romance readings, business consultations, discovering your sentence of passion, or digging into that single challenge that has run through your life, you can find the appointment that's right for you. You know, your opinion matters a lot. So if you enjoy this, take a few minutes to leave a review. Word of mouth is key with podcasts, so share it with others. And if you really want to help make the magic happen, go find me at patreon.com. There's a tier called I Believe in You. And for just a couple of dollars a month, you can be an official roadie and help all the things I do. The podcast, the books, the classes, the videos keep on coming. This has been Corby Mitlide. And until next time, keep those ruby slippers polished and I'll meet you on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road.